Thank you very much, Dave Bianconi. Every year I look forward to coming to Little Brown Jug Week here at Delaware, Ohio. And one of the reasons I look forward to coming is this gentleman on my right, Mr. Dick Jones, the former, now retired, associate editor of Hoof Beats Magazine. And Dick, you love the sport of harness racing, and I know Little Brown Jug Week every year is one of the highlights for you. No question about it, Sam. Uh, there are all kinds of racetracks around the country, but there's only one Delaware. It's absolutely unique and uh, I look forward to this every year. Now, speaking of racetracks around the country, you've been to most of them in your role in Hoofbeats and also uh, traveling around seeing the various places. Do you have any tracks that uh, are kind of your favorites in the Paramutual venues that stick out? Well, I don't know that there's any that uh, particular favorites uh, as far as Paramutuals. You certainly like the Meadowlands because the quality of racing there is as good as it gets. Uh, Northfield Park is unique. It's a half-mile track, but they do some wonderful things up there. And, of course, uh, we spend a lot of time at Scioto Downs here in the summertime, so we enjoy that, too. But uh, I don't know that I have any particular favorite uh, other than a special track like uh, Delaware. Now, off and on, you have dabbled in horse ownership. It seems to me a few years ago you had a pretty good sire stakes trotter named Black Tie Bash. What was it like owning a horse of that caliber? Well, when you have a black tie bash, you have peaks and valleys. But the fact is, he really represented a peak, and he made up for an awful lot of valleys that we had, I can tell you that. <laughs> he, was, he was a unique horse in that he had terrible feet, but he had a heart like a lion, and you got to love a horse like that. And we were very proud of him. He uh, raced against what I thought and still think is probably the best crop of two-year-old trotting colts that Ohio's ever had. And uh, he was very competitive, and he came here to Delaware in a race we wondered whether we should even enter him. And uh, he just got beat in those in two heats in uh, the Ohio Breeders' Championship. And, you know, thought we won the race because we were jumping and screaming and hollering. And uh, those are the kind of things when you own horses, you live for those kind of moments. And uh, it was great. It was just great, and uh, I'll never forget that. Now, what else are you doing right now? You still do some freelance work involving harness racing, do you not? Oh, yes. Uh, I thought maybe I would uh, get away from it, but it, it just doesn't work that way. So I've been doing uh, some freelance writing for various uh, magazines. I've done a couple of stories in, in the last two years for Buckeye Harness Horseman here in Ohio, and uh, those two have happened to be about... Uh, some racing movies that were made uh, where the racing action was actually filmed here in Ohio, uh, Green Grass of Wyoming and Home in Indiana. And uh, so I did two stories for them for that, and I'm working on one now uh, here uh, this week. And uh, in fact, I'm working on two stories. And uh, so uh, if I'm retired, it's unofficially retired, I guess. Well, I'm sure your wife Susie keeps you very busy as well in the home front. You're still located here in Ohio, Dick? Yes, we are. We still live here in Columbus. and. Uh, Susie is still my right-hand woman. As I say, I rely on her to make sure that I didn't leave my tape recorder in some stall somewhere and those kind of things. So I don't know what I'd do without her. Now, you've seen a lot of Little Brown Jugs. Any favorites or any favorite moments that stand out in your mind? Well, I think the jug that I remember most was the, is like perhaps everybody, the first one. Uh, I had never seen, believe it or not, I'd never seen a horse go in uh, faster than two minutes, and I came here for the 1960 jug with Bullet Hanover, and uh, uh, the the first heat I think went in 58 and four with Muncie Hanover upsetting Bullet Hanover, and I was just standing there and just literally shaking. I couldn't believe to, that any horses could go that fast, and uh, I'll never forget that. So I I suppose that I've seen some great jugs. Uh, but I think that one just stands out because it was the first one and it makes the biggest impression. You've done stories, feature stories, on most of the major personalities of the sport. Any particular driver or trainer that uh, really stands out in your mind? No, I don't think so. Um, I've done uh, profile stories and I've done them on owners and so forth. And I don't think so. I think that by and large... Uh, uh, all of the drivers and trainers that I've talked to have been cooperative and they've been great people to uh, interview and uh, I don't think that they are uh, uh, much different. Uh, their personalities are slightly different but I don't think there's any one that really uh, does that I'd say that's the strangest guy I ever met. 
Dick Jones, a man who loves the sport of harness racing and has contributed a lot. It's always great to see you. Best of luck to you, and we better send it over because they're in behind the gate.